Over the past year I have reviewed many gaming mice and it's been a great year for them with so many mice being amazing, but not all of them. Where do they rank among each other? Well, that's what tier lists are for. I'll be going through all the mice I've reviewed last year and a few extras. I'll rank them from S tier for only the best mice that I would use and buy myself, all the way down to the bin for the worst mice I reviewed. So sit back and relax, you can listen to this whilst you play games or something. Just don't get mad at me if I put something you love in the bin. Okay, so let's begin with the tier list. I have removed a few mice from my previous one just because they are outdated or they have been replaced by more updated versions. Um, and also because a lot of them would probably just end up in the lower end. So yeah, I decided to cut a few apart from a few including the super lights because that's a very interesting predicament that I predict I'm going to have. I'm going to try and keep this as concise as possible but it's always difficult with a tier list because you just end up wanting to rant. But basically this is just going to set out all the mice that I reviewed last year and a few extras um, just to put them in like a, a good picture as to where I think they are and parallel to each other. So it's not as strict as a top five but it will be a little bit more opinionated than my top five video. So starting off, I'm going to add uh, something to the S tier and something to the bin. In S tier, I'm going to add the Basilisk V3 Pro because this is my work mouse and I love it and I cannot work without it anymore. So I'm completely invested in this mouse. I do play some games with it, but not regularly. But as a mouse and some personal bias, the Basilisk V3 Pro is incredible. Um, into the bin will go the Haiti S Plus 4K because the battery has become detached from the bottom of the mouse, so it rattles. If you haven't seen it, my Final Mouse Ultralight X review features this mouse briefly to illustrate the problem because the Ultralight X has the same battery setup. So it's in the bin because it is broken and that's where broken things go and it goes into the ocean. Next up is going to be an old one, um, the Fantec Aria XD7, which I'm gonna put into C for now. Um, it's still a good mouse, a bit outdated by today's standards, but um, it is quite affordable. It's a unique shape. So overall, it's still an impressive mouse, which is why I decided to leave it in there. Another one I've decided to leave in from the previous tier list is the Lamzu Atlantis, which I'm putting into A. There's a few updated versions of this as well. So it's not going to be the same one that I had bought when it was first released, but honestly, it's a great mouse. It seems to be quite popular as well. A lot of people um, have bought one. You can get a mini version as well, a 4K version, but yeah. It's a great mouse, A tier. I think I might go through the glorious mice. So the Model D2 Pro and the O2 Pro I'm going to put into D. These mice were okay. They use ratio optical switches, which I personally dislike. They are well priced, but I did have problems with mine. The sensor skipping and input latency and them disconnecting because of wireless interference. Glorious did fix it, however, it sort of leaves a bad taste in my mouth, even though I didn't ingest them. Um, but metaphorically, I just, you know, it's not going to be any higher than a D. The other mice, the other Glorious mice, the Model I2 and O2. The I2 I'm going to put in E because one of them was broken. Uh, I believe the mouse one switch was 40. Um, the Model O2... You see, the thing is they have holes in them and they're not lightweight, which... Mm. But I did like the updated shape of the O2 and I do actually prefer the coating on these new ones than the um, the Pro versions, but... Okay, the, I, the O2 is going to into D for now. That can and will change probably, maybe. Next one is the HSK. Um, I'm going to put that in B for now. It is not like the HTS. Um, it's a very impressive mouse because it's so small and it still functions today, even though they did have a problem with them blowing up. Hmm. Now, I'll leave it in B for a moment. Next, I'm going to do the Harp Aim Ace, which is going in B. 
it's an expensive mouse, but it's also not that great, which is a bit weird. I believe I had a problem with the coating. Uh, I actually had to put grip tape on it, but um, it also has armory crate. Um, and also a very redundant feature of having some sort of aim labs compatibility. So honestly, could be higher, but uh, it's it's just lacking. So for now, it's in B. I'm going to put, this one's just caught my eye because it's got RGB around it. The uh, Cobra Pro goes into E just because it's not a Viper Mini. In fact, I'm putting that at a bin. It was just a, a below average mouse. A small mouse that was kind of heavy-ish for the size. I don't know where this, like, who this mouse is for, so it's going in the bin. Um, next up is the ECCW. I'm putting that in C. Arguably overpriced. Not a fan of the coating because it didn't change any of that. And I believe the scroll wheel was also pretty poor again as well. So overall, C at best. I'd be inclined to put it in D, but maybe a bit later. I am going to fill out the S tier with Vaxi mice. I was actually just going to combine these into one and just have Vaxi written on it. The Outset AX, MPO1S, and the XE Wireless. Honestly, in terms of shape profiles, if you find the right one for you, it's one of the best mice that you can buy. The quality of them are amazing, and they have massively improved i do remember i think on their website I've, i think i mentioned it in one of my first reviews that i did of theirs um, where they talk about continuous improvement and that's their motto and dare i say they've they've really taken that to heart because their mice just keep on getting better and better the xc wireless for example i wasn't that impressed with the regular xc but the xc wireless is just amazing by far s tier um, the Razer mice, so the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Viper V2 Pro. I'm going to put the Death Adder V3 Pro, V2 Pro, V3 Pro in uh, B. The Viper V2 Pro I'm going to put in A. Now, I actually prefer the Viper V2 Pro now at the moment. Um, I still have it out because I use it sometimes if I'm not reviewing a mouse. And honestly, I I think it's just... My, my grip type has changed. I used to be a very ergonomic heavy user, but now I seem to prefer ambidextrous mice. And it's probably because there's just been loads of ambidextrous mice to choose from um, over the past year and a half with a load of companies trying to be the next Superlight or the next M Game Gear XM1. So that's probably why um, the Death Adder has just been retired back in its box. Um, so yeah. The Viper V2 Pro just makes it, um, the shape is just a, a lot better than me, for me. Honestly, these could be S tier if they had better switches. But again, some of uh, the optical switch fad, I think really needs to improve this year because um, I've not been impressed by them. Speaking as I've not been impressed by them, the Lamzu Thorn is A tier, really comfortable, very well made, lightweight as well. And a great mouse apart from the switches again. Optical switches, the racial ones. I absolutely despise them. In fact, let's just I'm just gonna go through all the ones that have those same switches. Um Pulsar uh X Light V3, the standard version I'm putting into A. Because this is probably one of the um one of the best feeling mice in terms of quality that I've used of the of the the previous year so great job for them considering that they're bouncing back from the uh, original pulsar x2 fiasco the pro version i'm putting in b it's not a bad mouse but the coating is a little bit more glossy i don't know if that's an intended thing between the two or if it's just the black version i did find the coating to be more sticky and uncomfortable the LCD HD TV, I think, is a goodish idea, but most people are just going to apply settings and then never use it again. I guess it can give you peace of mind because then you can see what your current setup is if something feels a bit off. But personally, I think the, the differences aren't that massive. The aluminium scroll wheel, I think in my review, um, I said that it did grow on me, but I just don't think it's a 
big enough improvement over a standard scroll wheel. It is good. It feels great. I feel like it has to be exceptionally better, especially to justify um, using the aluminium one over a standard scroll wheel implementation, honestly. The Haste 2, the HyperX Haste 2, great mouse, put in a. A lot of people say that there's loads of int uh, input lag with it and stuff like that. I haven't noticed it when I've been playing with it. It's obviously the uh, update to a, a original Haste, which is a fantastic mouse. This one has no holes in it. And honestly, it's a, a really good mouse. So that is definitely A tier to me. Next up is the Lamzu Maya. I am putting this in C. It's an okay mouse. I was kind of impressed, but after using it again, after I reviewed it like a month after, I was like, you know what? This is actually kind of average. I wasn't a fan of the shape after using it. So overall, it just doesn't have the same sort of quality feel that the other Lamzu mice have. It felt like there was something missing from it. S tier. Ninjutsu Sora 4K. I love this mouse. I could go on for about 10 minutes talking about how much I love this mouse, but I won't. All you need to know is it is the best mouse of last year. Um, watch my top five mice of 2023 video to know more. But basically everything on it is perfect. Scroll wheel switches, coating, the whole thing. Absolutely love it. And I never thought I would because the um, original Sora, I was like, eh, I think they're going to bring out a even lighter weight one. Should be surprising because I think, you know, this one's already perfect, but oh well. Uh, Damo Shark M3, I'm putting in C. Um, cheap mouse, it feels cheap, but it's great for the price, very comfortable. Overall, it's pretty good, but it's just C worthy. I wouldn't put it up uh, against many of these. Um, Attack Shark x3 that's going e because this one is a cheap mouse and it does feel cheap and it does feel cheap in the hand it works it functions but it feels bad um end game gear xm2 wireless essentials i'm going to put in c i felt like this was a bang average mouse not really worthy to go any higher up than sc i think personally nothing really stood out and honestly just thinking about this mouse and how it's not the xm2 wireless is just annoying me because that mouse is just the jute nukem forever of gaming mice now we're getting to some big boys well i'm going to save the big boys for last um the helios 2 by fantech this is a really good mouse loved using it coating scroll wheel the quality of it was great just wasn't too sure on the switches. They don't feel as bad as Ratio Opticals, but they just don't feel that nice in comparison to some mechanical switches. Um, so, yeah, could have been better, but honestly, it's just one of those things. Next is the Pulsar X2 V2. I'm going to put that into B. It's a good mouse. It's a polished version of an X2. It feels a lot better, but again, it's using those switches that I do not like. I forgot about this one when I was doing all the uh, ratio optical ones. Now, the final... Actually, no, wait. I'll do the Pony Stormbreaker. This is going into C because it's got loads of holes. It's made of magnesium, but it's not exactly that much lightweight over a Lamzu Thorn. Honestly, it's expensive. And I feel like the things that make it expensive aren't that great. Mainly the magnesium, the hole design, which kind of can be a bit irritating on your hand. All of these um, etchings on the mouse buttons as well. The adjustable sensor is a good idea. And it's probably the main feature out of all of the unique features that it has that I think actually has some value. Apart from that, I wasn't that impressed by it. It could have delivered more, but it just didn't. So, yeah, I don't honestly say it as a C. I will shuffle these around when I've finished adding all the mice. Next up, the Ultralight X. This I'm going to put into D. And in no way should this mouse be in D at all. It's just that the quality of it, especially on my versions, is just not good enough for a mouse of that price. There are some great things with this mouse. There are some terrible things with this mouse. The holes on the sides, the obsession on trying to get it as light as possible. Overall, I think as a package, this mouse isn't going to last. Um, I'm not so bothered about the flex on the top. Funny enough, people in my review, I was just pointing out how there is flex on the top of the mouse, uh, you know, this part. And I was saying, 
that's not a problem because it's incredibly light. And people are like, why are you squeezing your mouse in that way? It's like, I'm not complaining about it. I'm upset that people didn't understand my point and I thought I made it very clear. Next up are the two super lights. The black one is super light one. The pink one or the magenta is super light two. The super light one I am putting into B. I know it's micro USB, but it's still a great mouse. And that's it really. It's it's still a, a pretty good mouse. It's not great. It's not A tier, but I would say it's on the same level as, as these ones. The super light two, however, I'm going to put into D. Why? Because the switches are terrible. That's why. Micro uh, USB type C was not enough to save this mouse. If they had made a super light one, just put a micro USB type C cable in it, I'd probably put it in A. I'd probably use it all the time. But no, they changed the switches. The switches are really stiff. They're loud. They just don't feel nice at all. It's D. It's probably one of the most disappointing mice of the year. It had so much promise. All right, so now I'm just going to do a quick shuffle. If I feel like any of them do need shuffling, I think the ECW, ECCW is going to go down here to D. I put them on the same level as each other. <sighs> I'm tempted to put the glorious mice down into E. Let me have a look. So S tier, that's locked in. Happy with that. A tier... I'm happy of that. I, I think most of these are very close to an equal level as one another based on my usage of them. B tier, I'm going to put the Harp Aim Ace to C. And C tier, I am happy with that. D tier, I'm unsure on the model O2. No, that's going, that's going into E. Holes in RGB on a mouse that isn't actually lightweight is pointless. Um, so D tier, I'm happy. Funnily enough, D tier is like the biggest mice of the year uh, in terms of um, clout. I mean, Zowie EC, legendary mice, super light, legendary mouse, final mouse, legendary brand maybe. But for them being in D tier and being wiped out by smaller brands is quite funny. Um, e, I think E tier I am completely happy with and the bin I am happy with. So yeah. That's my uh, final tier list standings of the, the mice that I reviewed last year. Um, I will share this tier list. So if you have your own opinions, then you can share them. Uh, we have a Discord, which I'll put in the uh, description as well if you want to join in on the discussion. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy with this tier list. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want some more um, detail on some of the top picks um, of the mice that I reviewed last year, um, check out my top five mice of 2023 video. It's well worth watching. I feel like it justifies each choice uh, as well as it can do. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this tier list and goodbye.